Here today with Mr. Brandon Donaldson, who is a journeyman welder, a metal fabricator and artist, as well as a house and breaks DJ. Welcome to the show, Brandon. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us what got you into music to start with? Uh, well, I grew up uh, playing very, very competitive hockey, and uh, in the dressing room, we listened to heavy metal. Believe it or not, I am a house and breaks DJ, but my first love for music was metal. And it was in grade three, um, it, believe it or not, it was at recess, and I was listening to Metallica, Kill 'Em All, Phantom Lord, which is number seven. <laughs> now, now, these grade sevens came down, and they, they came by, and they stopped, and they're like, your mom and dad let you listen to this? And I shit you not, these are my exact words, fucking writes I'm a hockey player. <laughs> That was my first love of music. Like that's kind of what got me started in it and I just absolutely love it. Is it time to kill the lights? You look like trouble and I like that. Send me all your Friday nights Got you tasting my Chanel Call me Coco Mademoiselle Is it time to kill the lights? You look like trouble and I like that Send me all your Friday nights Got you tasting my Chanel Call me Coco Mademoiselle When did you first start DJing and how did you get into that? I got into DJing, uh, it was in the very late 2000s, early 2001. Uh, my friend called me up and... Uh, oh wow, so you've been a DJ for 23 years. Yes, I've been DJing for 23 years, but not, but seriously since 2014. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but I got, uh, my buddy phoned me up, one of my best friends, uh, he unfortunately passed away this year and oh, he... So am I, man. Um, he, he bought turntables and he said, get over here. We you gotta try this. And I said, okay, drove over. We had no idea what we were doing. Um, YouTube wasn't around. Like it was, we were completely self-taught. I took four of my mom and dad's records. He had four of his mom and dad's records and we just went at it and we figured out kind of how it worked. And hmm. if you wanted to learn back in the day, you had to go to a club and get as close as you possibly could to a DJ or unless you knew someone who was already doing it. Learn, watch, and try to remember what in the hell they did and got home and tried to do it yourself. So everything we did was all done by ear. The vinyl we had had no BPMs on it. If you wanted to learn how much BPMs you did, you had to count 15 seconds and then times it by four. That was your BPMs. Okay. Yeah. A little more technical back then. Eh? Yeah, a little more technical. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, very, very technical. <laughs> so that was that was when I first started getting into it. Um, it was cut scratching and juggling hip hop. 
Uh, but then I was more of the mixing part of it. It just kind of clicked mm. with me. Um, I love the scratch part, you know, that kind of stuff. But when it came to the mixing, coming up with these new ideas of instrumentals and acapellas and like, oh, I'm going to try that. Oh, I want to try that. And, you know, you drive down the road and I'd have a pad of paper in my car and I hear a track on the radio. I'm like trying to write down as I'm driving down the road and I get home and look and I'm like, what the fuck does that say? Right. But, <laughs> you know, so that was, that was how I kind of got into it and it just, it clipped. It's, that was my niche. I mean, of all the instruments I played and it was just love at first sight. Wake up in the morning, I was feeling kind of cold, so I decided that I'd go and get some heat. Chopping up the wood so I can take it home with me so I can get the fire studded for my tea. Cleaning up the corn to make some flour for the bread because it is the time to get something to eat. Taking out the laundry to the river floor and fire is always nice to meet some friends to do with me. Oh, I'm not to me uh well it can mean a couple different things for me uh, it's the end of my day uh, you know like it's just what i look forward to um when i get home it's i jump on my decks i don't think about anything else other than playing the music uh when i'm driving it could be something that'll get me going or bring me down or whatever um but when it's also the recording part of it then it becomes a bit of a love-hate relationship uh, because I don't edit. You don't, you can't edit on stage. So when you get into a set and you make a mistake, say 55 minutes into it, you just kind of stand up, pace around, you know, like, mm, okay, okay. But you have to wait. For me, I have to wait because you can't play music angry. Well, some people can't, I can't. It just, no, it just doesn't not. work. No. Like, it's not, especially for house music. You don't play house music angry, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you are, there's something going on. But no, for me, it's, that's that's what music means to me is it just it's my escape you know it really does and it's just it's kind of like swimming to me where if you don't think about breathe if you just if you don't breathe you're gonna die right for music if i don't think about anything else it just works right so that's that's what it is to me they say the blessed child if he got his own so when i try to pull my manifest through the microphone
about uh, some of the most recent sort of festivals you played and stuff like that, like like bigger, bigger yeah. venues and whatnot? This year's been busy and it's been a very kind of a, a surprise. I thought it was going to be a nice, relax, you know, relaxed summer. And um, I played for my first time at Valhalla Fest, which is up in Terrace. Incredible fest festival. Like, I mean, the people there, the, the grounds itself, everything's branched off. It just, it was an amazing spot. And that was such a cool start to my summer of having that, that festival in my background. Mm -hmm. And then I played at, I technically did play at Base Ghost, but that was for all the art installation people. Like it was just kind of a little happy hour we had at our camp, the Shutter Buggy Camp. Okay. okay. Then, which that was my first time at Base Coast. Can't wait to go back. Yeah. Uh, then it was. I'll Bird be there next year too. <laughs> I hope to see you there because yeah. that's like oh, so good. Uh, then it was Burn in the Forest, which I played on three stages. We played. I played on our stage, which is Maja Earth. We weren't really a stage. We were more of a theme camp, but we still had sound. Uh, that was on Thursday night. Friday night I played uh, Rave Bots, which was awesome. Rave uh, Bots, I've heard of them. Yeah, they're really good. They've upped their they've upped their uh, production. That's for sure. Same with uh, a lot of the other camps. Uh, and then on Friday or Saturday night, sorry, I played on Sonnet's Cove and that was at 1.30 till 2.45 a.m. Oh, and prime time. Yeah, pretty much. That was, so I got told, he's like, if you don't bring it, you're going to see the hook coming out. I'm like, don't worry, man. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll get that energy up. It's uh, the style of music I play is, I like the upbeat, funky, bouncy, high energy kind of house tracks. And so then it was under the stars after that. And that was... The one that got uh, the fires where uh, everyone had to get evacuated. Oh. But I luckily had already played. I was leaving, so it wasn't an issue for me. You wanted to go home anyway, right? I did want to go home because that would be like trying to herd cats at that point, getting people out of a festival. Yeah. So, But that was awesome. I had a really good set. I played on Friday night at uh, 2 a.m. And everything went well. And then it was kind of that, I need a break, I need a break, I need a break. So it's nice having this little bit of a relaxed time right now. And, who knows what uh, the rest of the year is going to bring. Mm, yeah. Yep. Do you have anything uh, upcoming that you're... Nothing right now. And honestly, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of music that I want to record. So this is kind of my time to focus on that part of it. Because, you know, when you're going from one event to another to another, and I have a full-time job, it's hard to record a set. And I get people ask me, dude, when, when's your next recording? I'm like, when the summer's over. I don't have time for this. Like it's just, it's a lot of work, right? You know, trying to get oh, a yeah. set ready and then trying to record another set yeah. while also trying to sleep, eat, and go to work. So it's all the behind the scenes stuff. That yeah. So people don't really see. And they don't. Yeah. That's um, pretty they much see it. What you put out there, but there's there's at least five times as much work yeah. that goes behind that. But I have so much music that I'm just I'm so excited to finally get you know out online, which is awesome. So I'm really looking forward to having more sets that I can put out.
It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, Brandon. Before you go, uh, can you tell us where we could find your music online and how to find you on social media? Uh, find me for social media is on Instagram, uh, Tungsten Crook. Um, that's my DJ name. Uh, same with on Facebook as well. Um, and for my sound, you can find me on SoundCloud. Same thing, Tungsten Crook. Um, and so I've got 25 sets online. So yeah, lots of music to pick from. Uh, there will be more, as I just said. And so Looking who knows? Looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you so much for having me. This is... I had a really good time. Really good time. Thank you so much for your time, and hopefully we'll be seeing you in the new year.